Okay, I'm starting with a warming up question. Okay. Um, most of the film is uh, playing in the house. It's a really dark and claustrophobic <coughs> setting. How, how did the actors cope with that? Did they get depressed or something? Was it difficult for them to get in the road? Uh, first of all, it shouldn't have looked that dark. So it wasn't burning at all candles. I'm not blaming anybody, but it should have been a little bit brighter than that. Um, and that was one of the ideas I had, was that it feel like a soft, safe home. But it's fucked up. Uh, so the kitchen is bright, the living room is warm, the bedroom is disgusting and warm and filled with all the wrong things, and the garage is super bright and cold. Um, but we were an incredibly cheerful cast and crew. Um, whether that was to, you know, keep ourselves sane uh, or not, that's anybody's guess, but we were um, really enjoying ourselves. There wasn't a lot of depression uh, on the set. <laughs> um, I, I read a, a quote from Vincent D'Onofrio about how, how he would pick a role, and he said uh, uh, he picks the things which scare him most, uh, and it's a great role for him. Uh, was he your first choice? How did you meet? And tell us a little about, uh, about him in person. Vincent is easily one of the coolest guys you will ever meet. Uh, like, he's everything you want him to be. Um, I, he was my first choice for this, absolutely. Uh, there was talk from other people about like a film or, Philip Seymour Hoffman, um, you know, and that was almost too obvious to me. Um, and, and not, nothing against Philip. Um, <laughs> it just felt a little too easy and Vincent, uh, you know, boy, there must be a Philip fan in here who's going to tear me a new asshole. I can feel it. Uh, I adore Philip. It just wasn't what I wanted. So, um, but Vincent was my first choice, and uh, sent him the script, and he called me uh, the next day, and uh, said, you know, you didn't. We we know each other, and I said, yeah, I remember meeting you. And he said, you didn't hire me the first time. Are you going to hire me this time? And. Uh, you know, after I got over my absolute horror at Vincent remembering me and, and thinking that uh, I hadn't hired him, uh, we just sort of shot the shit and talked. And uh, by the end of the conversation, he was like, well, I really want to do this. And I said, okay, let's make a movie. Uh, he is this, the kindest, smartest, funniest, warmest man ever. And has sort of uh, made himself my adopted older brother, for which I'm in incredibly grateful. Uh, great fucking guy. Amazing. And brave as hell. I mean, he did things for me in this and trusted me that I can hardly believe. And at one point I asked him to do something that wasn't planned. And he sort of thought about it for a minute. And then he said, okay, I'll do it once. And I said, okay, I'm going to shoot it. And uh, it's in there. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that would be uh, Vincent naked on the bed, crying on top of the dead girl. <laughs> I said, Vincent, it says so much. <laughs> I got it once. Can I bring up something? Um, I would love to do a director's cut. There are talks that I'll be able to. Um, but what was supposed to be my director's cut budget went into cutting out the throat slit when Mary dies. That was what they made me remove to get an R. Um, so that was going into a flame room for a couple of days and painting out the blood, which just makes me crazy. Um, it was my one sort of on-camera death that I was trying to sell, and uh, now that's relatively gone. But I would love to do a director's cut for a couple reasons. There's a few scenes in, in, um, that, that aren't in the film that I feel should be. Um, and mainly I feel that the end should be given its full shot. That was cut a lot. And there's been talk, and I don't blame anybody who says it, that the ending in its current form sometimes feels tacked on and a little convenient. And so don't be afraid to talk about it. I get it. Um, it was... Um, uh, it was a time requirement, according to the producers, and I lost that battle. 
Um, I, Jake Weber did an incredible job in what I hope will be the director's cut, because when we shot it, there's an incredible reveal. Nothing is solved in voiceover, and you really get that this is the other kid in that nightmarish, abusive home. And if anything, Bob was protecting his brother the whole time, and now, um, you know, his, his younger brother was really even more of a human monster than Bob. So uh, I get it if, if you're feeling like, well, where the fuck did we go at the end and what's with the dad? Um, I hope to someday do that justice. Lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> did Mr. Donofrio gain weight for his role? Because he was very fat, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but I loved it, see? And that's how he showed up, and that's what I wanted. I wanted a human being. I don't want to see a cut, ripped serial killer. Um, I think he's incredibly, strangely, frighteningly sexy, like a rape fantasy in that. I think he's a monster. Um, he is every, he's too real, which is what makes him really sexy and scary to me. It's like, you can't negotiate with Bob. Bob's a real guy, and you don't have anything Bob wants. He just wants to kill you. So I like that he's big. And because we talked uh, about how I wanted his body, even just his height, to hang on his bones and be heavy, um, I think the weight helps him in that, in his stance and gait. That's fun. <laughs> he, was, he was speaking a bit like he was, uh, well, a bit dumb or, or retarded, so was that intentional or...? It, it, you know, I, this, this comes up sometimes too, I, he, Bob is not stupid at all. Um, Bob is, is smarter than he even lets on, but Bob's been hit in the head a whole bunch um, and has a slight lisp, so um, everything is hard for him. And because he's still that damaged kid inside this adult body, I, I think that that slows him down. Everything is heavy. Um, you know, and I wasn't trying to uh, justify who Bob was, but I do think this was my attempt at one example of how human monsters are made and that uh, we gotta stop hurting the children because they grow up and hurt children and hurt others. So that was, it's a, he's not stupid, he's just, he's a wound. Yeah. Uh, I just got a question about this, like, kind of disturbed me the, the, the style of these very cliche, stereotypish camcorder taping shots. Uh -huh. so what's the motivation behind that? Because every time I saw it, I was like, yuck. I, just, I, just, <laughs> I mean, I guess what? he takes it and he doesn't know, but why do they have to look that cliche? Um, well, it's, uh, it, th that again is a test screening fallout. Nobody knew what they were unless they looked that way. I kind of like them. Uh, I think there's few enough of them. I'm sorry you don't like them. Uh, you know, y yuck. Hey, uh, but we're different. That's what makes the world go round. Um, you know, it was, it's, th those are the little battles you play when someone says, well, I can't tell what that is. Um, and you may have liked it had the screening been brighter. They looked a little similar in this and therefore, and also this is the wrong font for the title. It may be because it's the NC-17 version, but that looks like silver toothpaste to me. <laughs> and uh, that's not the font I picked. So, but isn't life fascinating? <laughs> the whole time I'm sitting here going, oh, it's so dark. Oh, it's so dark. Oh, the toothpaste. Oh. Uh, and you were saying yuck. So, you know, it's a perfect hell. <laughs> Dying a thousand deaths, yes. Why did you choose um, the sound design? The sound design in the end, where it looks like uh, uh, the character is, is is leaving the premises, is leaving the house. Ah, uh, um, boy, you have good ears. Um, there were many choices for songs at the end. I didn't want to go out with a song, and I was willing to hear a bunch and let the composer work on some things. Um, but I thought, I, I don't think there's a right song to play at the end of this movie. It's not like you want to go out with, you know, Journey. So, um, I, I wanted to play what I thought could be the most sort of um, assisting audio vibe to Rabbit's Gone Back Home, and because that's the only place he...